Hi everyone, we're back here at Maker's Machining again. Uh, we just got done showing you how the uh, uh, dividing head and rotary table and indexer works. But now uh, I've flipped this thing 90 degrees so it's standing up the other way. So uh, the, before the chuck was laying horizontal and we had our part in there. Now we've stood this up. We know where our, uh, our parts are at in the, in the chuck there. Uh, we're going to simulate if we would have to put some uh, set screws or something in there. Uh, we, we know where, where our parts are at, or just so that we can get an idea of how this thing moves around here. Um, what I've got here, I've opened up the back side of this uh, indexing head. And when I say indexing, usually that means that you can index at a certain amount every single time. And what we've got in there right now is called a masking plate. That's this plate right here. So you take that out and right here in the dividing head is a little lever that actuates if, if you take the lever and pull out our our locking block then you can index the chuck manually we've disengaged the handle here so we could uh, dis lift this thing up here and then spin the chuck around and it will lock into whatever our masking plate has on this this masking plate here has uh, six different notches cut out in it, and with this uh, with this indexer, I've got a number of other masking plates they call it, or gag plates, I guess you could say. This has got four. Here's one with eight, ten, two, and three. So those are common uh, common increments of how much you'd have to index. But uh, in our case, we're doing this this one right now, and um, we'll put this gag plate up in there or masking plate set that in there and uh, position it so it is over where the the locking mechanism is right there on the bottom and then to hold that in place we've got a cover that goes back here and this thing bolts up on there to hold that uh, masking plate in position i'm not going to do that right now just for the sake of time here but uh, if you want to do cuts where you're indexing rapidly lift up on this handle lift up on the handle then you can manually turn the chuck and it'll lock into the next position lift it again let go of it and this thing here locks positively into different positions where the masking plate has the gaps in it so we just turned that thing around about uh, I don't know 120 degrees or so and and locked it in but uh, Going back to our readings on here, we've got uh, the the lines on the chuck are right here, or the or the vise, whatever you want to call it, and we've got our zero line here. We're at 300 degrees, so if you're gonna, we've disengaged the handle here. Uh, this thing here can can be rotated, and that's probably gonna be hard to turn here with one hand. But uh, if you disengage this handle here pull that lock out of there you can you can uh, hold that up there's a little set screw down there that uh, allows you to keep that out of engagement inside there and then you can use your uh, your dial here to put the movements of different uh, angles and shapes that you got to put on here but uh, I, I'm just giving you a couple little ideas of what an uh, index or dividing head is and you know, you've got to use your own imagination a little bit with something that you've got to make. You know, here's a, a nice looking part that's got all the holes already put in it, but uh, this is the kind of device that you can use to accurately index and get uh, six even increments or eight or ten or two or three, whatever it is. They'll be exactly the right dimension apart because that back dog that locks into the, uh, into the slots in the chuck or in that backing plate there, when that thing locks in right there, then you've got exact location. This thing here will lock in exactly on the money. Now, I, I don't know how many slots are in there. It looks like maybe every 15 degrees, so that would be, what, every, there's 20 of them there possibly. But uh, anyhow, that's just uh, an idea of what a, an indexer does. If you're using a dividing head, you're not gonna use the indexing capabilities there. You're gonna use the dials to radially move within degrees, minutes, and even seconds. And the, the seconds are, if you ever use a vernier caliper, you know, 
you can move and get your uh, readings made, or a, a, I'm sorry, a, a tenth mic that reads to tenths of a thousandth. You know, the, your regular thimble will go to a, a line number, and then you look on the on the uh, barrel of the micrometer, and you see which line lines up. And then this here, uh, this is uh, 60 seconds here. So you can read within uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, within, uh, you know, a real tight, uh, accurate reading of minutes and seconds there. So uh, within 10 seconds, I'd say you could do, maybe even within five if you're really able to get a good reading there. But there are other uh, dividing heads and indexers that some of the older style ones, the, the head actually could pivot like a trunnion type thing where you could uh, index and have your head, your chuck on an angle. Some of the older uh, dividing heads, they had kind of a pin system where you'd go around and depending on where you'd lock the pin, uh, if you look at pictures of these really old ones, you'll see that you can go to real accurate readings again by, by getting the pin set in there. But uh, anyhow, again, this, this thing here, the same way, we put this dividing head up on the table. I indicated across here to make sure it's sitting exactly square on the table. So um, you need to have everything accurate and positioned properly because if you have to do this job again, you can put it up there, you can repeat it. If you don't have your uh, vise or your fixtures or your indexing head or any of those things set up just right, uh, you, you'll have difficulty repeating the work again. So anyhow, I just wanted to to give you the the 90 degree version of of what uh, a dividing head does. I've had this thing for 30 years or, or better, and it really we don't use it every day, so it doesn't wear out. But uh, it's right on with uh, what we got to do. Anyhow, I uh, hope you picked up a little bit off of this. Uh, we'll be back with you again. Maybe I'll uh, get this thing set up here and. We did a spline in the lathe here not too long ago, and we'll, I'll show you how to do it. If you don't have a, a lathe that you can put live tooling in, then you've got to use a, an indexer or dividing head to make those kind of cuts. Or there's a couple other ways to do it too. So, Anyhow, uh, that'll be it for tonight. We'll uh, talk to you again soon. So long.